Hey guys, it's Nikki. Welcome back to another song. Re no, no, <laughs> no. Should I leave that in there? I like was channeling my song review intro. Today we're watching a documentary, Title Rising with the Warning. And this was a super thanks uh, comment from Justin Vesquez, I want to say. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I want to say thank you for that. Totally unnecessary. You guys know I tried to get around to everybody's requests, but I did want to say a special thank you to you. And yeah, we're going to check this out. I said that I was going to do this soon in one of the last morning videos that I posted and you guys suggested another one too so let me know we could do that one as well but this one I think is going to help me learn about the band because I had some questions like how did they start and like how did they form because they're sisters like did they all just always want to play instruments so I'm hoping that this teaches me some things it's going to be a little bit of a longer video I think this is 20 minutes yes 20 minutes 37 seconds, but I do like to make this channel cozy. So I encourage you to go get a drink, go get a snack. I have water here in case I need it. Um, I won't be snacking because I'll just be crunching into the microphone and nobody wants that. But yeah, let's, let's get into it. If you want to, I guess, pop your headphones on, turn it up. It's a little different than a song review, but still headphones are necessary, at least for me. And here we go. Let's learn about the warning. We obviously started playing here in Mexico, where Mexicans were from Mexico. So our first shows were always here in our home and then just across the country. And I feel like we've seen it grow over the years and how we started and just our crowd. And it makes me so excited so that excited, people yeah. my age are looking for this energy and like this music specifically. Mm -hmm. female-led rock bands, female, like, only woman rock bands. So to start working as a young teen, a kid, we didn't even start it as women. Like, we started out as little girls yeah. in this Children. industry. Children, literally. Yeah, yeah for sure. It involves a lot. And we were doing it with our parents. Like we were we were pretty protected. Like they supported us so much. They got us into lessons. Like they bought us our instruments. Like they give us the liberty to like really concentrate yeah. on music. Because imagine you're like just a teenager, maybe 13, and you wanna do this. But of course there's tons of different things that you wanna try out and do. So like sticking with it was also hard, you know? Especially all three of them. The band started out as a five-member band. Our parents are part of the band. Right now, yeah. obviously, our family has grown a bit more like, with our team, our management, and everyone that works with us. But as we keep on working, that is always like the center of everything. And everyone yeah. we start working with starts feeling like family because we've always had that vibe. How to be like disciplined and responsible and like level-headed yeah that, and, I, and i feel like that's really important for the industry that we're in mm -hmm. so a big hug to mom and dad for everything mm -hmm. What we think really got us into this energetic music and rock and roll was definitely the rock band, the video, the video game. game. We loved to play that game and it was so fun that we just like looked at the screen and we just, oh, we want to do that. I told my dad like, I want to play the guitar. And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, of course. By the first week, my fingers hurt so much that I was like, please, no. But I fell in love with it and there was no going back. Oh my 
Astro is so tiny. <laughs> I've been playing for 13 years. I don't like that number, but okay, 13 <laughs> years. And uh, well, I've been playing since I was a little kid. I would always play on the drums, like with toy drums. And I remember just, I really liked hitting Thanks. So it was like a perfect match for me. And my dad saw that I have really good coordination. And he asked me like, hey, like, are you up for lessons? Like, do you want to give it a shot? Oh, Taylor yeah. Swift, I think that was Nobody Taylor Swift. wanted to give me lessons. I was a, I looked like a toddler. I mean, and like I was six. super were, short, yeah. like playing the drums. It didn't look very, very promising for me. But uh, I met one teacher and I had like a, like a test class. Mm -hmm. And the teacher was like, oh, leave her with me. like. Like, she'll be good. Like, let's do this. I think she's tiny now, let alone when she was younger. My parents bought me my first bass, and of course, I was really young and really short, and I couldn't play a full scale bass, so they bought me a smaller bass, which I have right here. Right there. Yeah. yeah. It's really small, and I still couldn't play that, and I learned for about. <laughs> A month and then oh gosh, we started it looks like it's playing swallowing her up. So I yep. didn't really have like that much time to get used to my instrument before we started playing together. Okay, wait, but I know that this isn't part of it. I'm going to ask you a do question. It, do it, do it. Because it's like, do it. Cause yeah. I know, I know, this isn't my place, but I will. Because there's a lot of people who tell you, like, why don't you play with a pick? Because normally oh, rock music true. is just like, like but pick. you, like, from the start, it I was always like play with my finger fingers. style. It's I play, yeah. I know how to play with a pick now, and I do, I really do like the sound of it. But I don't know, I just always played with my fingers, and I do feel more comfortable with my fingers, even though I do play more on time with a pick. It's weird. It does hurt more though, but I get it. It's like when I, I, I play a lot of bass shoes, players do and when I play with yeah, 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 I get it. guitar the big turning point in our careers like we did our enter sandman cover which went viral but i feel like the point where we were like we really want to do this like for the rest of our we lives that was when we started writing our own music and releasing our own stuff that was like whoa like i can we can create something yeah put it out in the world and people react to it it was just something that we really, really like. Literally, liked we react to it. To. So now that we are doing what we do today, like I, I just feel like it's the thing that really keeps us going. Our music. Of course, like any type of siblings, like. We have our disagreements and our little fights and stuff like that, but we get along I really well. I love seeing people but in the studio. I think that's so really well, cool. Know how to make it work. Like the exactly. literal behind and the, the scenes. And the second that we start writing music, of the music everything music. just like, flows really nicely. Like I don't know what to call it except like sibling magic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this one. It was one of the Those first songs I think I listened to by them. Compositions ever. It was our first time writing. I was like wise. 12. Danny was 14 and I was 9. We were oh, children. <laughs> but I, it was the moment where we really fell in love with music and like what we wanted to do. Like creating something was just such a powerful experience. And you know, it was such a key thing, I think, personally, that we were not thinking about will people like it? Well, because we were not going to release it. We were not even going to record it. Uh, it was not going to be a thing. So we just literally wrote from our 14 year old's hearts. And then we jump into our first album, 21st Century Blood. And 
it was weird because some of the compositions that are in 21st Century Blood were written at the same time era, okay. as Escape the Mind. Mm -hmm. But there, I, there was this very big leap we gave with this song that we made called Free Falling. It was the first song we actually wrote together. together. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it was also a big thing that we started like looking for outside inspiration. We really like what's happening in the world that we can write about. And more than anything, like we read so much and we consume a lot of yeah. media as any Gen Z team does. <laughs> so we were constantly getting inspired by other Different stories scenarios. that we were hearing. So 21st Century Blood was like, we felt like it was our first step. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like, okay, we're a band now. This is our album. And nothing will change. I'm crossing I'm burning up. And And one thing that I really like that we do, we really looked for what the song needed. We were like, okay, so what if this is a song with only piano, violins, and stuff like that? Like, we didn't focus on. Oh, I wonder if the people in the crowd were like be, friends, uh, the ones that were like rock. really into we just it focused back then. On the energy that yeah. went into the song. So, if you hear our music, sometimes it will be very varied within the mm -hmm. same album. Queen of the murder scene, definitely true. But then Queen of the murder scene comes. It's our second album, and Queen of the murder I know that scene. That was our second. I was I was in middle school. I started going through my emo phase. So you can, you can hear clearly there how that shift and like, I'm angsty now. I'm learning. I didn't know that that was their second album. These songs and these albums like grew with us. It's yeah. literally, you can see like the change. Yeah, you can, you can go, feel like, the personality. Yeah, and Are you we yeah. know the murder scene is a concept album. It tells a story. A novel. It, yeah, it was like a novel. And it was a mm -hmm. really different process writing what? songs to fit a narrative mm -hmm. and a plot. It was really hard. It was actually. hard because we had some, and then we had to add like the filler episodes. Uh -huh. But yeah. we didn't want them to feel like filler, filler songs. songs. So we really had to put meaning into every single little part. That's true. You can't just tell the story super quick. But I was like really into this idea of making it a whole album about the story. Yeah. And when I told them about it, they were like, what? Why is there blood everywhere? Why? I was like, we, please we hear had, me out. We had to change so much. Like a the lot story. of the storyline, because it, was, it wasn't it was that like much that. of a storyline. It, yeah, it was just, just like murder. murder. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, we're getting into I was getting into K-pop. <laughs> That's true. I just so remember that too. We took the emo face K-pop like wow. express line, right? Yeah. So <laughs> you can hear a lot of influences in there that maybe you don't pinpoint them yeah. as such, but for us it's really apparent like which no, faces we were going to change into the, the one key like, changes emo, the yeah. like it was all very k-poppy for us it's a thing that we also love to do that as we start learning new ways of doing this we just like okay what's the next thing that we can try out with our music yeah so and in, in queen of the mirrors you know is key changes yeah yes. Yes. it was, it it was definitely change the key that was a theme. You have to like think of the whole story and not just the ending and like or the big picture of the murder. That probably would be hard to do. Coming from Queen of the Murder scene, things are really different now. Because mm -hmm. I feel like we really grew as people, even as musicians, more, like, right? Because we're going through our teenage years. Of course, you grow a lot from one year to another, mm -hmm. and you you start living different experiences and stuff like that. So I feel like this third album is personal yeah. like it talks more about our feelings or situations that are close to us or our opinions in certain situations you talk so mature for still being quite young evolve was one of the songs that we started writing together and we had music first 
Yeah. Like four lyrics and melody. It's usually the other way around. I like to So the three of us were in this, this room, room. Yes, and Danny right and Ale were like playing, like getting the riff. And I was like, let me write a melody really quickly for the verse and just like put some lyrics on there. I'm not in danger. I'm the danger now. And I was like, hey, that's a it's good going. line. That's a I'm good line. I'm not in danger. I'm the danger. I do feel That's that it cool. encases that, like, what this back and forth. Uh, new album represents for us the changes that we went through as musicians, I as like people, that. and in writing, because we saw things differently. Like right now, we really concentrated on adding a lot of like new harmonies and how like the bass and the drums were going to play together, together. and then differently at the same time. Like there is so much room to grow and we always enter these situations like with big wondrous eyes like we're gonna learn today mm -hmm. what are we gonna learn now <laughs> what's gonna happen yeah. now hey everybody Mi ritmo bueno pa gozar, mulata, oye cómo va. Mi ritmo bueno pa gozar, mulata, pam 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 pam. Definitely performing our songs live is a totally different universe. Like we treat it as such, even uh, ourselves. We know it's nothing like recording in a studio. But it's so much fun. You're like directly sharing and expressing to the people who are watching you. And I feel live. like our past albums, we try to grab like the sound, like how we sound live into mm -hmm. our recordings. And yeah. we never really- oh, We have never accomplished we that. We never yeah. accomplished that until like this, this third album. album. I've already collapsed. So I'll just drown my sorrows in a non-existent world. We put in a lot of hard work yep. into our yeah, live yeah. shows. We, we really plan everything out and yep. we practice it a lot. So <laughs> like that our, mean, just our more like, like if you see us playing in like our early sound, stages maybe? of the band, oh, we're we just like statues. And that's something that we actually worked on consciously. It's like how to play, being able to like jump around and bring more energy to the show. Like, like we make fun of each other while we're on stage. And I know like I shouldn't really be like saying this, but even when we mess up, we're like, oh, you messed up. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, we just, we just look, like, at look at each other like, like you, you messed, messed up. up. <laughs> That would be hard to have that energy. Like even if a crowd isn't into it, like you have to be into it. We play a show in our country and in our home city. It's just absolutely it's amazing. Cool. Actually, our last show that we played was in Mexico City, and we hadn't been to Mexico City in a long time. Yeah. So coming back and seeing that we had more fans, like there were a lot of people watching us. It was just. Insane. It was it one was of the so best cool. shows. People we ever like had. screaming our songs. We actually have like a video where you hear everyone singing on top of like it's Yeah, like, like you, you, can't you can't hear, hear us. <laughs> Have that kind of a turnout like, in your um, home, people, yeah. you know? Yeah, Ready people are really metal. passionate about yeah. music in general here in Mexico, and the crowds are always really energetic. Like this energy that they transmit, you just can't help but give it back. It's really about making like a personal connection of what you want to transmit through yeah. your instrument. Cause I, I like I look at our past videos, like our covers, <laughs> no, no. and I'm like, no, no, what are you doing? But we were so young, we were starting out, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's a really nice thing. Looking back and see, like seeing how much you've improved, how much you've grown, 
A veces las cosas obvias son las más Man, they're so inspirational. Just how they talk. Te asfixiaste con tus propias manos. Cuando todo apunta que por fin alguien te viene a rescatar. Te encuentras nuevamente abandonado. Looks like a cool video. There's a goal, and there's something that you want to reach. Now, it's really about putting in a lot of work, and just also be very conscious that the people who work around you are different. You know, are going through different things and will think differently than you. There's no one that will think exactly like you. So taking things with a grain of salt and not taking things personal Personally. for it to ruin like your experience is a key thing you know as sisters we really have like that separate you know our working selves and you know our sister selves which could be beneficial if you have people around you that think differently for ideas and stuff Pro, there's pros and cons Sometimes people have these stereotypes or these stigmas, like we've seen it in places we've played in festivals and stuff like that. Like the treatment is really different to like other bands, like male bands. But we see that change after like we play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we play, and then like people's faces completely change. Yeah. Like everyone's just so <laughs> excited. She does this a lot. <laughs> they remind themselves that it doesn't matter who is playing, their age, whatever it is. It's about the music. Music is the language. It doesn't matter like where you're from, like what language yes. you speak, like anything. Like music is the, the language. language. Oh. Get over and add pop down. interesting because I was I think when you're just into something you're not even paying attention to time because going into it I was like oh this is going to be long I don't even know if anybody will want to watch something this long but then when I'm watching it I'm sure you guys feel the same way it's like I didn't feel like 20 minutes I was expecting there to be more that was really cool I'm glad we watched it hopefully together <laughs> hopefully somebody else is watching along it says that title posted this two years ago but yeah, it's very interesting just to know that they all got into music together pretty much from the start and that their parents were on board for it. I feel like it would be, I don't know, I mean, I guess every family has, you know, different situations and if they can make stuff work or not, but like Danny said, it's it would be hard to predict, like, are they actually serious about this as far as lessons go, money for instruments, you know, that's a lot especially for three and apparently they stuck with it and they were very <laughs> very successful with it and it was cool to see them talk about growing as a band and learning different things and how it is in the studio and trying to be creative and like I said they're so young but they talk so maturely about things and they really seem to have it together for being young. I will say that Pow is still my favorite. She just has a lot of energy. Even in an interview, you could feel that energy. It kind of, I mean, they all have, you know, their own personalities and their own vibe to them, but her personality just kind of like stands out to me for some reason. But yeah, this was really cool. And I won't drag this video on too long because I know it's going to be a long one anyway, but I appreciate you guys watching with me, hopefully. <laughs> And yeah, we'll have to check out the other one. I don't know off the top of my head what that one was called. Let me see if I can find it. Would it be Mayday in the Making? But there's a few of those. You guys can let me know. I won't waste your time trying to figure this out. You guys can let me know which one. I think it was Mayday in the Making. Mayday sounds familiar, but tell me what we should check out next. And I feel like we should come up with a name for this. Like, I'm planning on posting this on Saturday. Today's Friday. 
the 15th. I'm hoping to post it on the 16th. Hopefully it doesn't get blocked. I don't know how this will work with a documentary, but it'd be fun if we could do this from time to time. Just any band, not necessarily just a warning, but any behind the scenes stuff that is music related, I think would be cool, but we have time to work on a name for that. I was going to say special Saturday something. I don't know, but special Saturday sounds stupid. That's a lot of S's. <laughs> I'll take a sip. That's another S. But okay, enough of the silliness. Another S. <laughs> I will end this here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you again, Justin. I'm just going to leave it at Justin because I don't want to butcher your name again. This was a fun one. All right, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.